Did you know that Scotland was under military occupation by British troops during and after the Battle of Culloden from 1745 to 56? The Stennis Historical Society pieced this information together using 18th century manuscripts. The military sites included fortified buildings, barracks, garrisons, and camps. 29 Scottish castles were taken over for this purpose, amongst them Stirling, Blackness, Dumbarton, and Edinburgh. There were several forts that doubled as prisons, Fort William, Fort George, Fort Augustus, Fort Cumberland. There were fortified barracks and hundreds of garrisons and long-term camps, all to control the Scottish population. Even the Western Isles were occupied. Would this have happened if Scotland entered into a truly voluntary political union in 1707? Of course not. But we know England violated the treaty even before the ink was dry and has continued to do so ever since. Did you know why we are so certain that we never treated away our rights or sovereignty in either the, the Union of the Crowns or the Treaty of Union in 1707? We know that we never gave up any territory. Why do we know? Because the king, the monarch, or and the parliament didn't have the powers themselves. And you know yourself, you can't sell your neighbour's house if you don't own it. And that's the crucial difference. Neither the monarch of Scotland or the parliament of Scotland had right to take away or treat away our land. So we'd be concerned about that. And of course, that has huge ramifications, because if they don't own the territory of Scotland, they don't own the assets of Scotland, they don't own, own the oil, they don't own the gas, and we are getting robbed daily. The nation of Scotland has a constitution which enshrines the supremacy of the Scottish people over all other authorities of state. Westminster has grossly and repeatedly violated the provisions of that constitution, which is a contractual obligation ratified by the nations of Scotland and England in the Treaty of Union. It is ruled not as an equal partner, but like a colony, and disposed of our assets to enrich a privileged few. Just look at the profits of the power companies announced this week. Centrica, owners of Scottish British gas tripled their profits to 3.3 billion on the back of soaring energy prices. So, to stop the eradication of our sovereignty, to stop the abuse of our protected rights, and stop the plunder of our territory and resources, you can join the Liberation Movement. Sign the Edinburgh Proclamation at our website, liberation.scot. Or you can also join at salvo.scot and become a campaigning member. Do you know why salvo is called salvo? It's because of a provision in Scotland, which later became an act. And I will read what is attributed to the famous lawyer and patriot, Willie McRae. After the Act of Union was passed on the 16th of January, 1707, there was one further item of business as there was at the end of every session of the Scottish Parliament. And that was the Act of Salvo. Salvo jure cuius libit. Let whoever sue the crown or saving the rights of everyone. This was a gesture respectful of the Scottish constitutional arrangement whereby the people are sovereign and every person must be respected both as an individual and integral unit of sovereignty, much like being any, a part of a, the whole of a hologram. Every subject was thus left with the means of escape, the private right to contract out if they felt they had been wronged by the action of the Crown. The English Parliament in 1689, having reduced its subjects to citizens behoven to the Sovereign Court of Westminster, gave no such opportunities for redress and still does not. But the Parliament in England cannot claim now to have inherited powers over the subjects and the people of Scotland that the Scottish Parliament did not have. There's a facility in Scots law, for instance, where if the people choose to universally and completely reject a piece of legislation, the Court of Session can declare that, that law to be in dissuade 
or obsolete. Just imagine if we had the provision of Salvo today and every time the parliament proposed legislation that took away our rights, we could stop them by um, invoking Salvo. Did you know that many of the concepts that are included within the Declaration of Abroad 1320 and the Claim of Rights 1689 are now found within international human rights treaties, employment law, and also incorporated within the constitutions of some countries. So when people tell you that they, these laws are ancient, they don't apply anymore, it's a lie. Did you know that Scotland has become physically smaller since the Union of 1707? On the eve of devolution, a stitch up between Tony Blair and Donald Dewar redefined the maritime border, resulting in 7,000 square miles, a 7,000 square mile plunder of Scottish waters, which included seven major oil fields. The Argyll field, along with six others, were now officially designated English. This move meant that the oil and gas revenue from the fields previously considered Scottish revenue was now deemed to be generated south of the border, playing havoc with the GERS figures. The Scottish Adjacent Waters Boundaries Order 1999 was introduced in accordance with the Scottish Act 1998, which established the, the devolved Scottish Parliament so put in the context of your neighbour buying the house next door and building a swimming pool on your land that encroached onto your land. At the end of the day, your title deeds are still going to show that that land belongs to you. And Scotland's title deeds still show that that water belongs to Scotland, including the seven oil wells included. Do you know that the... The Highland clearances that took place after Culloden uh, was not the first time uh, Scotland had been invaded and, uh, and had its land cleared. And in 1650, Cromwell uh, basically won a battle at Dunbar, which you may have noticed uh, Lucy Fraser referring to in her first speech in the Commons, who's now the Minister of Culture where she uh, laughed about Scots being sent away as slaves to the colonies. Uh, 100,000 Scots were sold uh, at that time. Uh, it wasn't just the Highlands that were cleared at that time. Uh, in those days, Scotland had 40% of the complete population of what became Great Britain. Uh, and and they were systematically cleared, they were sent into slavery or deported, etc. Et uh, 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 women uh, who, who, who were left had their noses cut off so that people wouldn't breed with them. Uh, uh, it, it fulfills all the sort of definitions of what would in modern day be called ethnic cleansing. Did you know that profiteering, like that of energy producers and suppliers, are doing to us today is illegal under Scots law and that unless we cross the line to independence in some style with our constitutional rights intact, Scotland will not change in any meaningful way. Without rights, we would still remain at the whim of politicians and their corrupt agendas. Join liberation.scot. Thanks. Uh... All the people who have been recorded on this broadcast have been staying at an absolutely outstanding guest house here in Oban for the last two nights. Uh, I can't recommend the Green Court guest house any higher. The hospitality has been fantastic. Tony, who is the owner, is a committed Yes supporter and he's done his very best to make sure we had all the facilities we needed for the planning meetings we've been hosting here this week. So if you're ever in the open area and you're looking for accommodation, the place to come is Green Court Guesthouse, run by Tony Coogan.